Hello and welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. Today we're going to go over another NURBS fillet command. And I've been corrected on the correct pronunciation of fillet and not fillet, like I was saying. Anyway, under the uh, surfaces menus, under edit NURBS, surface fillet, then we have freeform fillet. A uh, previous video I went over circular fillet, and if you uh, click over here you can take a look at that video. But uh, for this one, We'll be going over the free form fillet command. Let's go into the options, take a look at what we have. Now edit reset settings. Make sure we have our default settings here. So in this middle section here, we have the tolerance settings, which is similar from the tolerance settings and other NURBS commands that we've gone over, including the uh, circular fillet. But quickly, what this is, is you have a global tolerance or a local tolerance. And by default, we're using local. And when you choose local, it gives you these two sliders for positional tolerance and tangent tolerance. If you choose global, the sliders go away. And that's because when you're using a global tolerance, you're using a global settings that Maya uses for all tolerance. And when you're using local tolerance, you're using tolerance just for this one command right now. And the tolerance settings the global tolerance settings are still remaining as they are no matter what you do to your local tolerance settings. Uh, if you want to look at the global tolerance settings you can find them under window settings preferences preferences and in the preferences window down under settings you can find tolerance and this is the global tolerance sliders that you can control if you'd like or leave as their, at their default values. We'll choose local for now, just so, if, so you can see that what happens when you do adjust them. It's a very, it depends on the, it's a very situational thing. Uh, it depends on the object and uh, just the kind of look you're going for. But aside from the tolerance, we also have bias and depth. Those are the two main settings for the freeform fillet. And then output geometry. And then when output geometry just means that the resulting geometry from the command is either going to be NURBS, polygons, subdivisional surfaces, or Bezier. Uh, I do have a complete video if you choose polygons. You have a ton of settings down here. I have a, another whole video going over all of these uh, polygon settings. If you click here on the left you can go check out that video. And it's all the settings for con converting a NURBS object into a polygon object. Because this is a NURBS command but it allows you to output polygons but it uses the these conversion settings to do that uh, we're going to keep it NURBS though for now so the main two that we're going to look at is bias and depth and we'll look at uh, tolerance as, we, as it comes but first we need some geometry to work with so I'm going to go to create NURBS primitives cylinder I'm actually going to go into the options and choose none for caps. I don't want any caps for these uh, cylinders. Then I'll close that and then drag out a cylinder like this. And then I will make a, another one. The create NURBS cylinder. And they don't have to be the same or anything. And just to make it a little bit interesting, I'm going to rotate this one around. So I'll take the second cylinder and move it kind of on top of the first one, leaving, leaving a gap, and I'll hide the grid. Okay, so we have this. What a fillet does is it kind of blends the surface between two objects and creates a kind of in-between surface. So the way you get this to work, you right-click on one of your objects and choose isoparm. Click here and kind of select this isoparm down here. I'll right click on my other cylinder, select isoparm, hold shift, and select that isoparm. Go to edit NURBS, surface fillet, freeform fillet. And now you can see what happened here is I got a very twisting, twisted shape. And I, wanted, I did that on purpose just to make sure that whenever you did this, if you had this result and you're wondering why, it's because of the seam on my cylinders. If you know much about NURBS geometry, they, they all have a seam. So you see this line here is a little bit thicker 
the cylinder. Hopefully you can tell. Um, if, if you're working in your own version of Maya, hopefully you can look at that in your own screen and see it. And so the seam on this one is over here. And the seam on this one is over here on the opposite side. Because I rotated the cylinder, the seams are in different places. And those seams are very important. And I have a video right over here you can click. It has it talking about the move seam command, which is you can find under edit nerves move seam. So you can move that seam on an object and kind of fix these twists that you find. And if I rotate this object thinking, like, oh, I'll just fix it by rotating it, that does work. You can see as I get the seam close to where the other seam is, that twist goes away. Although you can see if I select the geometry, it's still, you can see how that these two seams are kind of trying to meet each other. Let me turn on uh, wireframe on shaded. Here we go. So you can see the thick lines on the two cylinders, and then the thick line on the fillet is trying to match the, where those seams are. So as I rotate the cylinder and I get the seams to more line up, you can see how it kind of straightens the geometry out. And I have very simple cylinders here. If you're dealing with a much more complex shape, you might have to use that move seam command to get the seams to match more cleanly for your fillet. But in any case, obviously you notice that when I selected this cylinder and rotated it, the fillet was changed, and that's because of history. After applying a fillet, if you move these cylinders around or, or uh, rotate them or whatever, the fillet will recalculate and change its shape and position to blend between the two objects seamlessly, or as seamlessly as it can, like so. And obviously, you have to watch out for shearing like that. You have to kind of adjust to get it looking as cleanly as you'd like. But that's the general basics of what the uh, freeform fillet does. Let's look at some of the options. If I go here in the channel box and choose the fillet input, you see I have that my positional and tangent tolerance, depth, and bias. Those are the same settings we had in the options when we created the fillet. Now if you did use a global tolerance setting when you created the fillet, the position and tangent tolerance settings here might still be here, but they won't have any effect because it'll be using a global tolerance. I hit control A to go into the attributes. I also have the fillet uh, section tab or section of the attributes over here. And again I have my bias and depth and, and my tolerance settings here. There's also, you can see I have left curve and right curve and these loading uh, boxes. This is allows you to know which surface or which curve from surface is being applied to which. But first let's go over bias. Now bias by default is set to zero, so there is no bias. And if you know the definition of bias, it's kind of like preferring one thing over another. And so when I adjust these this bias slider, you can see the isoform in the middle of the fillet change position going from one side to the other because it's preferring one side or the other with the bias. Does that make sense? So if you need that isoparm to be further over here or closer to this side, you can adjust that with the bias setting here. And I'll just put it back to zero for now. Then we have depth. You can see with depth, it kind of adjusts how much it uh, flows because you'll notice that you know, the fillet's not just a straight line from one cylinder to the other. It has this kind of curvature to it because it's trying to adjust its shape to make the flow between the two cylinders smooth. So whenever I deselect it, you see there's no obvious seam. By adjusting the depth, you can make that uh, compensation for the curvature much more pronounced. Or if you go down, it will become those straight lines from one object to the other like that. And that's using the depth slider and you kind of just adjust that based on your needs. And by using the bias, they kind of work together for the final shape. So you could get something like this if you want. And again with history you can kind of push and pull these things around to get see what happens. So it's pretty cool.
And then the tolerance sliders, again, it's just a matter of kind of adjusting these. And in my case, the results are very subtle, if even perceptible at all. Just because I'm dealing with pretty simple shapes. You might have uh, more dramatic results with a more complex shape that you're working with. Let's go back to the channel box here for a minute and choose show manipulator. I don't have anything to show, although under inputs you have the fillet input here, but then below that you also have curve from surface 1 and 2. And those are uh, referring to the curves we selected at the beginning to create the fillet. So if I click on one of these, you see I have min max value, isoform value, and isoform direction, but also if I have the show manipulator tool active, I have this little blue uh, icon here. If I click and drag on this, you can see that it splits in half, and you can kind of adjust on how much of the curve you're applying the fillet to. So you could create a partial fillet. You can see what I'm adjusting here if I look in the channel box are my min and max values by adjusting these uh, slider or handles, I should say. And you get some interesting shapes. This is all because of the depth and bias settings. You can go back up here and adjust these. You see I can get different results. Like so. So yeah, you can have the fillet only apply to a part of the curves you selected from the beginning. And the same for the second one. Show manipulator tool. Kind of click and drag these around. Like so. And that's min and max values. You can adjust these by hand over here in the channel box as well. Uh, they even have isoparm value. And, and right now it's at zero, at least for uh, isoparm one. If I click on isoparm two, the isoparm value is 1.41, so and so. If you adjust that value, you're actually adjusting which curve on the surface this is being applied to. So if I select the first one, choose isoparm value, and then middle click and drag, you can see how my fillet suddenly rises up the cylinder being applied to an isoparm up here as opposed to the one on the end. So you don't necessarily have to have the fillet connect to the very end of the surface. It can connect somewhere in the middle. And again with history turned on, or still active, again adjusting these shapes, you still have the uh, control to manipulate the surface to get different results. Like that. And ice palm direction by default is V. If you choose U, you get some kind of crazy results. So keeping it V is typically uh, what you want to do. But you never know. Maybe that'll help out whatever you're working on. But I'm going to take the ice palm value back down. So that's at the end of my cylinder. And that's pretty much the gist of it, I think. Let me know if I missed anything about the uh, freeform fillet that you wanted to know about and I just didn't see or miss somehow. Uh, thanks for watching and liking, subscribing. If you have any comments, please let me know. Uh, if you have any suggestions for future videos, please let me know that too. I have a long list, but uh, I definitely uh, will put uh, priority on suggestions from you guys. So again, thanks for watching, and I will talk to you later.